So this video is going to cover analysing some malware using a Cuckoo Sandbox. So a Cuckoo Sandbox is an open source tool which will allow you to automate some malware analysis. Now this is ideal in an enterprise environment, perhaps you work in a SOC, you've been passed a piece of malware by your you know, incident manager and they've asked you to quickly part some IOC so you can try and determine the scope of an incident. And this is where something like a, you know, a Cuckoo Sandbox is ideal. You can submit the malware to the sandbox, quickly run it within this secure environment and pull out some IOCs such as network traffic, created files, registry changes, etc. And there's different ways you could you can set this up. You know, you could have it so it never calls out to the internet. Uh, personally, I've got mine set up so that all network traffic uh, that the malware generates will route via Tor. So that sort of hides uh, the source IP addresses of my Cuckoo Sandbox. Uh, if you are interested in setting setting one up, then the link is at the bottom of the slide there, cuckoosandbox.org. So how does it work? I'll just give a quick overview of this before I just demo the Cuckoo Sandbox. Uh, my setup, I've got an Ubuntu host, and on that I have the Cuckoo package installed and the relevant dependencies. Within my Ubuntu host, I have VirtualBox installed, and within VirtualBox there's a Windows 7 guest. Now the Windows 7 guest has a Cuckoo Python agent installed on it, and what will happen is I will submit a piece of malware on the Ubuntu host. It forwards that onto the Windows 7 guest, and while that malware is running and infecting the Windows 7 machine, the Cuckoo agent that's running on the guest machine will then feed back the artifacts and information to the host machine, which is running the, you know, the main Cuckoo package. And once it's finished running, like I say, it generates that report and all that information is captured and the Windows 7 guest is rebooted. And that's how you quickly you know, use a sandbox to generate some information on a piece of malware. So on my screen now I've got the um, Cuckoo web dashboard here and you can see in here you have the option to submit a file for analysis you could submit URLs and hashes and you have some system info regarding your host machine such as free disk space etc on the left hand side you can see the version of Cuckoo that's running and there's also some uses statistics so you know how many uh, pieces of malware you have submitted to so on mine it's 34 uh, how many are running, how many are pending, etc. Now you could submit the file using the uh, web you know, web dashboard. Personally I like to use the command line and if you have set one of these up before this should be quite familiar. In, in the top left hand side basically, well basically I've got four windows here. The top left hand side is the sudo cuckoo router command and that's just going to allow cuckoo uh, to run certain commands as root. On the bottom left is just the information regarding the web dashboard. The top right is some debugging information. So you can see here, let's have a look at, um, on this line here, you can see it started the analysis of a file. Uh, it's acquired, you know, the, the virtual machine, etc., And it just gives you information as the, as the analysis is being submitted. The bottom right window I've got set up is to actually submit a piece of malware and the syntax is Cuckoo, submit the file that you would like to submit to Cuckoo and then you can specify you know, what the you know, package is. So here I've got it as an EXE. You don't have to do that but um, I find sometimes you get more information out of just specifying the files in EXE. So if I kick that off, we well, should see that's running now so you can see success. That piece of malware has been added with an ID of number 37. And again, you can see starting analysis on that file. It's acquired the virtual machine in the Windows 7 guest. And it started the, you know, I assume that's the packet sniffing that's going on, etc. And you'll just see that run through there. Um, but once that's been done, if I just refresh this page here, what we should be able to see is there now that's changed to running one there. So you can see a piece of malware is running. What I've done is actually submitted this previously, so we're going to have to wait for that to finish. And the one I've done previously, again, it's the same piece of malware we've analysed in previous videos. It's this 267.exe. And here on the right-hand side, you get the score. So it's saying this it gives you, um, you, know, you know, a rating of the file. So it's saying this file is very suspicious with a score of 5.8 out of 10. 
you get a summary of the malware so the size you know type of file that it is uh, some hashes there that you could use for virus total um, PDP path so again we've pulled this out before in our static analysis of the malware and then you have some information on when the file was executed so we have the time it was started when it was completed the duration of the analysis the routine so I mentioned mine's routed through Tor and then there's some logs here what I find quite useful, like I say, you know, if, if I'm, you know, I'm on an incident, and like I say, I want to quickly plot some signatures, some information, um, I can then, you know, use Cuckoo to do that. And this is also comes useful later on. Perhaps, you know, if I'm using X32 uh, debug, and I want to start pulling out some useful Windows APIs. Again, we've covered what Windows APIs are in previous videos. I can use this to maybe pull out some in interesting APIs. I might use as breakpoints on my uh, reverse engineering in X32 debug. So on this first one here, it says queries for the computer name, and here we have get computer name w. That's the Windows API function, and we can see it's pulled back here this cuckoo one, which is the name of my uh, Windows 7 guest machine. Again, it's pulled out the PDB path. We have here allocates read write execute memory, usually to unpack itself. So again, when we've done our behavioral analysis in the previous video, we've mentioned that it's created a new process. And again, that was to unpack itself. And here, you can see the Windows API that's being used to allocate memory in that newly created process. So it needs to allocate memory, create the space, and then inject that unpacked uh, code. So again, if I was, uh, well, again, in a later video, we could break point on this and maybe that's what we'll use uh, to manually unpack the malware. Again, uh, we've not covered this previously, but it's saying it checks whether any human activity is being performed by constantly checking whether the foreground windows change. So again, you'll often get malware looking for maybe windows being moved, keyboard input, etc., just to see if it is being run in a, in a sandbox. The reason it does this as well is malware will often, you know, it may run some checks to see if it is running in a sandbox. And if it detects that it is, it may behave differently. So again, that's why you can't rely 100% on something such as a cuckoo sandbox. The malware may detect it's running in a sandbox and then may generate perhaps maybe different C2s, some false C2s, um, just to throw the malware analyst off. So like I say, it's ideal just for getting a rough idea of how the malware behaves, maybe pulling out some quick identifiers, but I'd never rely on this 100%. I'd always manually do my own analysis. Here we can see it's querying the disk size. So again, it's, it's, it's trying to detect whether it's in a virtual machine. You know, often will, you know, malware analysts may allocate small disk space for their virtual machines. And, you know, it's maybe a way that the malware will try and detect if it is within a um, virtual machine and perhaps being analyzed. Uh, we can see it's creating a new service. Well, here we could look here. It says um, C Windows SysWow64 Engine After.exe. Now it's a different file name to what we had in our previous video with our behavior analysis, um, but it is running from the same location that we saw as our persistence location, this C Windows SysWow64. So that's confirming what we've seen in our previous video on the behavioral analysis. Uh, what else do we have here? Moves the original executable to a new location. Again, you know, we know that. But what we've perhaps um, gleaned from the Cuckoo sandbox is that this um, randomly generated name will change. But again, when we come into our later videos, when we start reverse engineering the malware, I'll take you through exactly how these names are generated. Uh, next, we have communicates with host for which no DNS query was performed. There's 34 events in here. Uh, and this is pulling out C2s for the malware. So again, we could start using these within an incident and checking our proxies for any of the uh, for any of these C2s and see if any other devices have been infected on the network. And I would imagine a couple of these are the ones that we pulled out in the previous video. Next, we have installs itself for auto run at Windows startup. Again, this is something we already identified in the previous video using Prot.dot. But we're here we can see the service name for this one is engine after for the engine after.exe and then we have the full service path of the persistence location again we've covered how to um, gather this information manually ourselves in the previous video uh, it has attempts to remove itself sorry attempts to remove evidence of the file being downloaded from the internet 
and then we have connects to IP addresses that are no longer responding to requests. Well, that's because this is an old piece of malware uh, and the C2s are probably no longer active. Next, we have some screenshots, which aren't particularly interesting for this sample, but I'll just show you here. This is the um, Python um, script that's running on the guest machine, so the Python agent. Um, this may be useful if you're running something, you know, if you're running, say, a piece of ransomware, you want to see, you know, what messages are generated perhaps from the ransomware. And at the bottom, you have some DNS requests. On the left hand side, you can then provide further information. So if we click on the static analysis tab, you can then look at information that, again, we've seen similar things using tools such as PE Studio. So again, the compile time, sections of the malware. Um, and again, um, what I find quite useful is the import. So I've mentioned before, you have these libraries, uh, these DLLs, so kernel32.dll, and then we have the list of imports that the malware is using. So, you know, the import address table, again, we've covered this previously. Um, strings, so again, you can part strings. Again, we've covered this before, any relevant strings that may be of interest within the malware. On the left-hand side, we have the extracted artifacts tabs. There's a few of these, you know, where it hasn't pulled any information back, so I'll skip on those. We have the behavior analysis tab. And again, this shows the process tree. Um, so again, it's showing that it's creating a new process. And, you know, as we mentioned before, this is where the malware is unpacking itself in memory. And as we scroll down, what is quite useful is the list of Windows APIs in the order that they are used by the malware. So again, um, that may be of interest when we come to unpacking the malware. We then have the network analysis tab, and this will tell us any interesting network traffic. So there's no HTTP traffic, um, but let's say if I click on the host tab here, we can see all the C2s that have been called, uh, any DNS traffic, which isn't particularly of interest in this. Maybe it's just doing this to see if it has any internet connectivity. And then we have some UDP traffic as well, but we're probably going to be more interested in this type of traffic with the C2s. Um, drop files, it's not showing us any there, but if it did, again, this is the place where you would be able to pull up information on the drop files uh, and gather any information on those. So again, I could just go back to the dashboard. Like I said, I just think it's a great tool uh, for some quick and dirty analysis, quickly plot some IOCs and give yourself a quick idea of how the malware is behaving.